Okay, I've had this a while and meaning to fit it, so I'm going to do it now and show you how to. A USB charger, stroke, cigarette type, plug in type charger to fit to a bike. Now, the nice thing about this one is it's got a switch on it, and I'll get into that later on. This was 15 quid off of Amazon, there is a link in the description. Um, come on. <laughs> You could not make that shot if you tried. <laughs> oh, that's standing. Right, okay, where was I? So, yeah, basically, you get... You get this and this, um, and with this one they supplied some sticky cable clips, some zip ties, and an extra fuse. It's a very small fuse. And simply, this goes onto the power. Under here, you've got five volts for USB. It's got rubber protectors on it. And that's your 12 volt cigarette type plug-in lighter. Now, the idea of this is, because it comes with this bar mount, is that you mount it on your bars, and then it's up there at the front. However, I don't actually want it on my bars. I don't need it on my bars. Um, what I'd like is it to be under the seat, and that's actually going to make this incredibly easy to fit. Seat off. And it would appear, battery is here. Make sure it's one shot. Yeah, you see? Battery's here. And I want to mount it basically back in here. Um, so, might be a little extra cable, but it's okay. Now, the thing I'm going to talk about here and that switch and its importance and the options that you have. I'm going to wire this directly onto the battery because I can switch it off with this switch which means that it can charge at any time whether the bike's turned on or not. Now that means that if you were to put something on there that took a lot of charge and you forgot to turn it off when you turn the bike off, yeah, it would drain your battery. What you can get to stop that happening is the thing called an automotive relay which is basically a switch and a switch. If you imagine you had, say, a thousand volt line on this side of power, and you put a switch in it, okay, a mechanical switch, and then you put a little motor over here, and you have a very small amount of power driving a small motor to click that switch backwards and forwards, you see how a small amount of power can turn on and off a huge amount of power when the other system couldn't handle that much electricity. You see, see what I mean? It's like a Basically what you do with an automotive relay is you would have the power going to one side of this, you'd have uh, a cable coming off of here to the other side of the automotive relay, that will give you your link, uh, and that will be switched by the switch, which you then wire the other switch side of it, because it has like four to five pins on it, onto something like a tail light, and then all it has to do from that tail light power is just be on. If it's like, oh there's power there, so it's like on, and that will turn the other side on, that will turn the charger on and in reverse when you turn it off, it turns off. If you'd wired it directly into the brake line, for instance, because um, you know that would turn on and off with the bike. Um, when I say brake line, I mean brake light line, the running light, something that's on all the, or anything that's on all the time. If you'd plugged it directly into that, it would starve that system of power. So you'd end up really dimming your light. So this is someone with a bit of common sense who can remember, oh, I need to switch that off when I got off the bike. Um, if you're charging something at the time. I don't know if this is going to draw power when it's switched off. It shouldn't do. There's no reason it should. Anyway, this is so much talking, it's not going to take long. And twist the twizzle. And there is an inline fuse on here. See this? Inside here. Inside this. It's all waterproof, so that's good. There is a fuse in there, okay? I'm not pulling it apart. Let's take the negative, and there's like a battery cover here that I've got to try and uh, get it under. Come on. To be fair, I'm just going to bend that leg down because it's it's thin enough, that little bend. Like that. The phone. Ah, oh, 
Damn it. Just undone a little strap, and this is obviously a cover that goes over the top. Come on. There we go. Let's get the side of the strap. There we go. Now there was a hole in the piece of plastic that means that this can come out sideways nice and easily. It's about that angle I guess. I'll just try that. Yep, yeah, perfect. Straight out of the little hole. Got a little hook. Over ow. There you go, so that's back down. Right. So there you go, power's on, so it's working, switch it off and it's off. Now, as I say, I'm going to stick mine here onto this plastic because it's a big enough hole in here, but I want to clean all the grease off. So brick line cleaner, clutch cleaner, cleaner, car cleaner, that sort of, you know, alcohol based stuff. Get all the grease off. That's a slight example of what brake cleaner can do to plastic, that's just whitened it slightly, um, which is fine because it's, it's not visible. But that's why you do need to be careful about where you use brake cleaner on a bike or a car or anywhere actually. But it is great for getting stuff off of stuff. This is self adhesive Velcro. Uh, it's very, very strong. I'll put a link to this and some other stuff which I swear by always having, which is self adhesive Velcro that wide. Um, but it's like super, super strong. You can, seriously, it sticks to stuff like you wouldn't believe. I always have some of it around. Stick it there, I guess. Actually, oh, look at that, it wedges under us slightly. What I will do in the future is I'll actually just shorten this cable, but I don't have any uh, connectors. To just snip it and reconnect it. I could solder it, but oh, not at the moment. This will be fine. Why do you want one of these on your bike? Well, you would want one up at the front if you were running a GPS that took one of those plugins, uh, although normally the GPSs would run to the bike themselves. Um, phone on a round mount or something, you've got a charger right up there. There's all sorts of reasons you might want it there. For me, I see it more of a safety feature, as if you break down and your phone dies. You can stick it in, and even if the battery's got very little charge left, it will have enough to get your phone going, most likely. This is a bit more fiddly on my bike because of the design, but it might be easy with yours. You might have a big space with somewhere to put it. Okay, so on. Charging. Well, just tell me it's already at 100%. I think what I might do is I might put some padding material or something in here so I can stick a device, uh, you know, it's not going to get smashed around in there. Because then... Because then it can all just be in there and be charging while you're riding. But obviously, I'm gonna. I need something in there to stop it all shaking around. So there you go. That's literally it. Nice and simple. And the only thing you have to remember is, well, switch it off. Obviously, the main advantage to this one is the fact that it has that switch that means you don't have to use a relay if you've got a memory. But putting a relay in is not difficult. Uh, it just, you know, you're just gonna have to find a wire and bridge it over and. And you know it's uh, it's easy, but I don't need to because this is just simple. So links to things you've seen me use in this video you'll find in the description. And uh, let me know what you'd like to see next. This is either side of it. This is made of rubber. When the force increases in here, against between you know the lever you that you're pulling it. with just your don't, hand, don't 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 don't. That's a hand. <laughs> oh God. There. No, no, don't bog down. His name is Jeff. Um, 